A few days ago, one of Egyptology's most remarkable artefacts was moved to its new home at the Grand Egyptian Museum. What appears on the surface to be a humble if distinctive boat, the solar barge of the Pharaoh Khufu is a remarkable piece of history both ancient and modern. It's a model boat. But when I say model, I don't mean a detailed miniature. This boat is 43 metres or 142 feet long and 6 metres or 19 feet wide. It's a model boat because it was arguably never designed to sail the Nile. It's said that the boat is river worthy even now, huge if true, since it is presently 4,500 years old. As I've said before, the success of Egyptian archaeology is owed in no small part to Egypt's dry climate. Out on the Giza Plateau, with its ancient Lebanese cedar, garland thorn joints, and even the lashings, ropes made from Esparto, the boat was found… well… intact would not be the right word for it. It wasn't damaged or rotted away, but when archaeologists unearthed its tomb, a large hole carved out of the Giza bedrock, they found the boat deliberately laid out, ready for assembly. It was buried this way, it wasn't neglected, nobody forgot to build it. In fact, and yes, I'm about to contradict something I said only sentences ago, there are signs that the boat was not only once fully built and river worthy, but may have seen some very limited use on the water. It may have been King Khufu's funerary barge, for example, or one that he'd used very sparingly in life. It may have been assembled, tested to see if it was watertight and could float, and then immediately disassembled. We'll never know. But in being disassembled and buried not far from its royal owner, perhaps it was hoped that the boat would be Khufu's vehicle in the afterlife. In Khufu's time, boats were primarily made from tightly bundled reeds. Egypt has a decided paucity of large trees, the sorts of trees that make big planks for boats, so wood was a luxurious commodity. A boat made of cedar would be, by definition, for a special purpose. And while, yes, the sort of king buried in the world's largest pyramid could be trivially accepted to also want a boat made out of expensive materials, there is a significance to the Khufu boat beyond the king's vanity. And we can see that significance in its shape. Because another way in which this boat is a model, in that it's modelled after Manjet, the boat whose name translates to the dawn, in which Ra sails across the sky during the day. Automatically, therefore, it's also modelled after Manjet's sister ship, Mesktet, whose name to the best of my translation ability simply means the ship. This was the boat Ra sailed in at night, through the underworld, from which he is sometimes said to battle Arpep, the world ender. The significance of the king being given a model of the solar barge to sail for eternity is considerable. Nowadays, with our modern habit of conflating all of Egyptian history into one unchanging era, we often take for granted that the pharaoh was the adopted offspring of Ra, the sun come to earth. But in Khufu's time, this was a reasonably new idea. That the pharaoh had come from Ra and was rejoining with the sun for eternity was an emerging idea that the pyramids, these great beacons to the sky, were in support of. By giving Khufu this boat, he was being joined with Ra symbolically. As he sailed to the west to his burial place, no doubt the sun was setting ahead of the procession, and the two kings, divine father and earthly son, were dispatched beyond the horizon, reunited and destined to be reborn together in the morning. It is certainly interesting that the boat was disassembled and laid out so carefully, rather than being left intact, since the Egyptians loved depicting things in their prime and fully intact, but in the full context of Egyptian magic, I believe this is understandable. A boat like this is a thing held at tension. The planks will weaken as they go unvarnished for centuries, the joints will come loose, the ropes may slacken or snap. I think it very likely that the decision to disassemble the boat was made because it was better that spirit servants of the king should have to rebuild it in the beyond, than that the boat's earthly model, its corpse, magically speaking, should be allowed to break. The boat, in short, was disassembled for the sake of preservation, just as Khufu himself was. Because if the Egyptians were experts in anything, it was the principles of conservation and resurrection. The boat is being moved for much the same reason as the mummies of the Golden Parade. The Grand Egyptian Museum is state-of-the-art, not just as an exhibition space, but as a place for preservation and archiving. The boat's own dedicated museum at the foot of the Great Pyramid wasn't very large or modern, and frankly was considered by many to be a bit of an eyesore among the quiet and simple majesty of the monuments it shared land with. 
Moving the boat has always presented a technical challenge. For all that its materials are remarkably robust, it was always unlikely to survive disassembly and reassembly. That was out of the question. And so, for a long time, moving the boat, while very desirable for a lot of reasons, was also out of the question. But that problem has been painstakingly solved. The boat has been moved in one piece. While that's an obvious solution on paper, as a technical challenge, as hundreds of technical challenges rolled into one, it was not easy to solve. Moving companies risk having to offer refunds when they scuff your Victorian nightstand. Imagine being the guy who splintered a 45 century year old boat. Nobody wants to be that guy and have Zahi Hawass hunting them down with a crossbow for the rest of their short lives. It took as long as it takes to make a new human for teams of archaeologists and engineers to prepare the boat for moving, and it was an international effort led by Egyptian conservationists and engineers. The parts of the boat that could be removed or disassembled were done so and packed securely. The hull of the boat, the main challenge, was packed with special materials, restoration was done on any imperfections on it. it it was laser scanned to make sure that there was every possible understanding of its weaknesses, and it was surrounded by a shock absorbing metal cage for transport. To manage the turns and slopes of the relatively short journey, a specialised remote controlled heavy goods carrier was employed, and tested multiple times with different loads, repeating the journey over and over. Because it was remote controlled, the vehicle had an entire team outside on foot observing its progress as it went, and therefore problems arising from driver error were all but eradicated. At last, after months of constant work, with ceremony befitting one of the world's oldest surviving intact vehicles, and one designed to carry a guard no less, the boat was brought to its new home a few miles away. A feat of engineering by modern Egyptians that I feel without a doubt would have made their pyramid building ancestors proud. Thank you for watching. I just crossed past 200 subscribers, which is a very nice threshold, so thank you to everyone who's subscribed and shared and liked and commented, and of course to those who continue to back the channel on Patreon. Let me know in the comments what sorts of things you want to see in future videos, I read every comment, and I've only ever had one that was racist and about aliens, and yes, it was the same comment. Until next week, my fellow armchair Egyptologists, may you sail eternally through the skies, enjoying long life, prosperity, and health. Thanks for watching. Head over to my channel for more, or click here to see what the YouTube demons think you should watch next. I hope you'll consider subscribing. If you'd like to support and collaborate on the channel with me, go to patreon.com slash armchair Egypt. You can also join my Discord community, there's an invite link in the description.